So, so what, are you, what are you doing here today? I'm doing a speech um, about the situation with AIDS in America, basically, and how we need to address what's going on. Um, we seem to be falling a little behind uh, in, um, in America. Um, I find this disease very cyclical. Every 10 years or so, after we spend a lot of money trying to educate people, um, a new generation of people, and, uh, and we tell them to have safe sex and um, to abstain sometimes, but have safe sex, wear condoms, we find that after 10 years, another whole group of people come along and we have to start all over again, which is really, really um, frustrating because it takes money to edu you know, for education. Um, and we find that if we could get into the schools at grassroots level, which we do in, um, in, in places like Africa, where we get into to kids at, at a young age and tell them about preventive um, measures for not getting uh, HIV, we find the success rate is tremendous, but we've never been able to have access to schools here. So we find that, you know, that it's frustrating that every 10 years or so, here we come up, there's over a million, 1.1 million infected in America now. Um, and 30% uh, of that are people under 30 uh, years of age, which is frightening. Um, we find that 40% um, are Afro-Americans, 57% are um, uh, men having sex with men, um, and 500,000 people um, don't have really, they're not accessing their, uh, their um, medical, uh, what they should be doing for their status, and 250,000 people don't even know they're affected. So we're, we're really fighting the same problems that we did when we started this AIDS Foundation years ago. I mean, there's less stigma about it, but um, it seems to be that, you know, Every 10 years or so, we have to start this all over again. Sometimes in medicine, we, uh, something occurs where you're actually a, a victim of your own success. Yeah. The medications are pretty good. They are pretty good. And as a result, you've seen some of this return or resurgence of high-risk behavior. People saying, especially as you're saying, young people, you know what? I'll take the medications. Yeah, but they don't do realize. Yeah, I agree. And also, if they have a drink and they take a drug, it always, I mean, I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. I know that when I used to use and, and drink, that my mind situation was altered completely. You know, your caution goes out the window and you think, ah, oh, well, we'll gamble, we'll have, you know. And luckily enough, I was so lucky not to be HIV infected. But once you have that drink and that drug, your mindset goes out the window. And a lot of people think, oh yeah, because there's medicine available now, as you say, they, we're gonna be okay. And we have to take now one pill a day maybe, which is in incredible because initially people had to take God knows how many pills a day, various cocktails to, to get them through this disease. And now people have gone back into the workforce, they've become alive again, they live for a much longer time, which is great, but this is incredibly toxic medicine you're taking. And it doesn't work for everybody. And you know, you're really playing Molotov cocktail, not, um, uh, Russian roulette with your life. And uh, it, it's, it's sad, you know, you think after all this time and uh, and all this education that has gone down and uh, with all the statistics and deaths that people have seen with the Ryan White situation going on, that people would be a little bit more careful, but we're finding they're not. 1992, Ryan White. 1992, yeah. the beginning of your foundation. Mm -hmm. You said publicly that that was uh, in part a lot of the inspiration for you to start the foundation. What was going through your mind in the 80s? As, a, as HIV AIDS was becoming something that people were dealing with, what were you, Elton John, thinking about? I don't know what I was thinking about. Um, I, I look back on my life now, and I remember I did a record with Stevie Wonder and Dion Warwick and Gladys Knight called That's What Friends Are For, and I think that was my only decent contribution to what was going on. I, um, I should have been out there with the ACT UP people, I should have been more on the front line. When I got sober in 1990, um, I realized that, you know, I'd been so self-absorbed and I regretted that I hadn't really joined in speaking up against what was happening in the early 80s, which was really frightening stuff. So I don't know where I was. I don't know where I was, and I, and I really deeply regret that. And I've tried to make up for lost time because, by being far more outspoken, and now I'm sober, and, and, and devoting much more of my time to, uh, to giving back um, and to doing as much as I can to prevent this disease from spreading. But I honestly don't know where I was. I'm ashamed of myself. Well, this foundation of yours has become one of the most uh, uh, reputable and I think uh, high impact foundations in the world of AIDS. Yeah. When you're trying to decide what to do, right? So you can say, look, uh, vaccine, that's where yeah. I should put all my energy and yeah. money or reducing stigma and prevention. How do you decide? What goes we started off di as a direct care. In, in the 1992, um, there was still a need. People were getting f meals delivered at home. I mean, I did.